Okay, here's a little thought experiment for you. What do you do when a client comes to you and wants a new guitar but wants it to sound vintage? Is it A, panic and tell them that you can't do the commission? Is it B, put it in the oven and just hope that you can bake your troubles away? Or is it three, tell them to go and buy a vintage instrument instead of commissioning a new one? You have the time that it takes my intro to wrap up to write the correct answer in the comments now, go. The answer was B, and I'm gonna tell you why. <laughs> now during my apprenticeship, it was like my second ever commission, and the client came to me and asked me to make him just that, a vintage guitar, vintage sounding guitar. And I was like, right, that's interesting because I'm pretty sure that I have to build it from scratch, brand new. And then I kind of calmed down a bit and went and did some research, and I found out that there is such a thing called Torrified wood. In the wise words of Dana Bourgeois, who was one of the first American luthiers to use this kind of wood, torrification is the elimination of volatiles without damaging structural cellulose. Basically, what I understand torrification to be is the process of baking wood to the point where the resins begin to crystallize in the instrument, leading to a stiffer and more lightweight piece of timber with a better density for pro producing vibrations. God, that was a hard hard thing to say quickly. Obviously, if you have a brand new piece of timber, it's still gonna have some moisture in there, so it's not gonna vibrate as well as if the resins are harder and not as wet. And of course, all you're doing here is speeding up the aging process of the wood, because if you have a guitar that is sitting in your living room for 60, 70 years, then of course it's gonna dry more over time. The resins are going to crystallize and it's going to retreat into that desirous state of density, stiffness and lightness that you really want. And torrification, is literally the process of speeding that up by putting it in the oven and baking it. Now, just a few logistics before you scream at me, what the hell are you doing? That wood is gonna set on fire. You do bake it in an environment that is free of oxygen so you don't accidentally set, set the wood on fire or whatever. Obviously that wouldn't be ideal. So yes, we have the, do you remember the, the triangle that we learned in school? I mean, I got a D in GCSE physics because I was like, I don't need this. I'm gonna be an actress. I'm gonna be a musician. Anyway, turns out I was wrong, but I did pay attention to that bit at least. So as we know, for a fire, you need oxygen, fuel, and heat, and that creates the flame. So if you remove the oxygen and just have the heat and the fuel, then the wood will not set on fire, which is good. It will just bake those pieces of wood, bake the resins nicely, and uh, provide you with a beautiful piece of ready-made aged timber. Now, of course, this does come with a disclaimer. Obviously, you can't recreate vintage tone grain for grain. The one thing I would say is that something that contributes to the tone of vintage guitars supposedly as well is the fact that you're playing the guitar throughout time and obviously that is vibrating the top wood and all of the wood on the guitar and that leads to the resins being displaced in different ways as well and that contributes to it as well so don't think that obviously you know oh i can just go make a vintage guitar if i just put my guitar in the oven it doesn't quite work like that okay let's talk about what is vintage tone first of all and of course i'm going to look to the epicenter of knowledge and wisdom the internet forums to answer my question i'm just going to troll through for a bit and kind of find some opinions on here so we've got a lot of people talking about the warmth which again i would agree with I haven't played many vintage guitars, but the ones I have, it's it sounds nice, you know, and you listen to recordings and it sounds very warm to my ears. Somebody's using the word raw, which I don't really know what it means. Do you see what I mean? It's like, what does that mean? What? A lot of people saying it's a marketing buzz. Ah, oh, this guy's talking about electric guitars. I hope that I haven't been reading exclusively about electrics throughout looking at this thread, but who knows? Someone saying that it's tone that is more expensive than other tones? I would probably agree with that. Okay, this guy says that vintage guitar wasn't a term when he started playing in 1961. However, there were old and used guitars with the repairs from a long service life. No one thought about original parts. I don't think that's a full sentence, mate. What's the biggest problem in the UK today? Oh, that's an advert. <laughs> I would love to know the answer to that. I mean, I can. I have an idea. Anyway. Yeah, this isn't very helpful. Let's just go with uh, the opinions of everybody on this thread instead. That's way more powerful. Anyway, on to the next part of the story. Now you understand what torrification is. This guitar that I was commissioned to make was, as I say, during my apprenticeship. But when I was talking about this guitar with the client in, in early stages, we had a really hard time, or I had a really hard time, wondering what he meant when he said that he liked a certain sound. Obviously, there's no 
language that we understand universally for the description of sound and feeling. It's sort of so separate and artistic and not empirical at all, which is quite stressful when you're trying to make an object. I actually feel like I'm like a sonic decoder is great. It's, it's like a secret job title that we didn't expect. But anyway, we settled on on this guitar. He liked the warmer sounds, as I say, likes the vintage sounds. So we went with the Torrified Adirondack Spruce Top and we went for a walnut back in size, a USA black walnut back in size because he has roots in America. It's a 12 fret guitar. It is a 25 inch scale length, which is 635 millimeters if you're in the UK like me. I have inlaid some antique paper, which is kind of like my signature, I suppose. This particular piece of paper was reclaimed from an 18th century atlas, which is really exciting. And it was done by a craftsperson in the 18th century. I guess it's a nod to the vintage in the instrument as well, one could argue. Got a laburnum fingerboard and bridge, which is a bit left field, but I'm into it, you know? It sounds great, it feels great, and it looks great, I think, and my client thinks so, which is the main thing. Anyway, I have still got that guitar in my possession. The client who ordered it is extremely busy and we tried to deliver it once already, but basically something went down and he had to kind of dash off and he couldn't get it. So we've, we've been, you know, he lives in, different countries and, and we've been kind of like, when are we gonna get this to you? And, and I really wanted to hand deliver it and he wanted me to hand deliver it. So got it here in the workshop still. So I thought I'd just show you a little bit about what this tone sounds like, because I'm actually pretty happy with the sound of this instrument. This particular instrument is not faithful to the kind of work I produce now. I think things like the finish are different. I would prefer a high gloss finish and I'm moving forward with my with my future clients with high gloss finishes. And also this model is a teeny, teeny bit smaller than what I'm producing now, just because I found that I wanted to adjust the curves a little bit more. So that is the case as well. So that is why I don't kind of show this guitar as my more modern work but I'm willing to let it slide for you guys. You'll be pleased to know I am actually delivering this guitar very soon to Paris, so that will be great. And finally, he'll be able to kind of have his guitar, which will be great for everyone involved, but it is the bane of my life sitting here. I really hope my playing's gonna do it justice because I'm not super hot as a player, but I'm gonna play some really basic stuff, maybe some fingerstyle because it's a fingerstyle guitar, and just give you a kind of idea of how it's sounding. Anyway, let's give this a let's give this a roll. I also love the punchiness of the trebles because it is a modern instrument as well so it's it's really honing into those two like slightly warm but also quite punchy. I just really like that that high end kind of it's kind of sustaining I, I enjoy that a lot it kind of gives it a sort of drone for you to do some stuff up there with anyway I, I'm into it I'm into the sound <sighs> so shame I don't have a guitar here in the workshop that is not with torrified woods but I think in the future when I demo my other instruments that are upcoming which don't include torrified woods then perhaps you can listen to those and, and make the decision for yourself it would also be very interesting to hear whether you guys believe that vintage tone has a sound to you. Like some people are completely adamant that it does and other people call it marketing. And that is always gonna be a divide in the guitar industry. You know, it's whether one thing sounds better or worse than the other and if you can manipulate it with certain factors, but the jury's out. And I'm gonna leave the comment section wide open for you to, for you to do that. I'd also just like to say a big thank you to everybody because I was made YouTube's creator on the rise the other day and I just completely didn't realise because I never checked my emails on that account. 
and it was just absolutely lovely to see so many people reacting so well to this craft and engaging with perhaps learning new things and just enjoying a bit of nerdiness so again keep dropping those video suggestion ideas and I really look forward to getting through all of them I've got an exciting one planned for quite soon and I look forward to doing that so thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video speak to you soon